Alright everyone, welcome back. So, we continue on our clinching videos with the Los Angeles Kings. I apologize if I'm a little bit late to this. I know I definitely am. The Kings clinched, I think, last Saturday or something like that. It's been a while uh, since they clinched. Um, I know I'm late to it and I apologize. But regardless, the Kings are in the playoffs again for the third straight season. It's nice to see that when I started watching hockey, LA was in a really bad spot. I never really got to experience, you know, the Stanley Cup wins or them being good. And it's good to see that now we're out of that rebuild and pretty much the same core of guys like Kopitar, Dowdy, etc. are leading this team again. So, currently, the Kings are 43-26-11 and 11 for 97 points. They have scored 250 goals and led in 208. They are 21-11-7 and 7 at home, and they're 22-15-4 on the road, and they're 12th in the NHL. So, again, the Kings have been bad, were bad for a while. They were rebuilding, but now they're back in the playoff spot, and they look pretty good. Now, I do have some concerns with this team that I'm going to take from last season and into this season as well. The goaltending is a concern. The defense is a little bit of a concern. Um, I do have a little bit of a concern about secondary scoring, but apart from that, I do like this team a lot. I really do think that this team in a few more years, or maybe even this year, has a legitimate future of winning a Stanley Cup at some point. So hopefully that is this year, but obviously we will find out if that obviously does come into fruition. So I want to get into leading scorers here right away. You got Adrian Kempe with 75 games played, 27 goals, 46 assists for 73 points this season. I think Kempe's had a really good season. He's a guy who's really impressed me. The goal scoring's come down a little bit. We noticed Kempe actually scored, I think, 40 goals last year. He had a really good year last year, goal scoring wise. This year, it's been a little bit calmer of a season, which obviously is kind of expected given the fact that you know, Kemp, Kempe might have reached a little bit too, might have peaked a little bit too high last season, which is okay. But regardless, um, Kempe, I still think, is a legitimate, really solid player and will do some good uh, with the Kings for sure. Second in scoring is Kevin Fiala. Fiala with 80 games played, 29 goals, 43 assists for 72 points. Fiala, again, looking like an even better trade um, from last season in that offseason. I think that he's been really impressive this year for LA. Speaks a lot of volume for what this team has been overall. Uh, third in scoring and still chugging along is Ante Kopitar. Kopitar with 79 games played, 26 goals, 44 assists for 70 points this season. I think Kopitar's overall had a really impressive season overall. And I definitely think that he deserves a lot of recognition for what the Kings have been doing the last couple of years for sure. Um, if it weren't for Kopitar, I really do think that this team wouldn't be like a, you know, legitimate. They, they would be a little bit further off with not having Kopitar as their number one center, but I feel like Kopitar overall these last couple of years has still stayed the same, even though his production is going down a little bit. It's still 70 points for a guy of his stature. Um, he's been around for a very long time, so it's impressive to see there uh, from the LA Kings. Fourth in scoring is Trevor Moore. Trevor Moore, obviously not really that well known of no, no, not really that well known of a player, sorry, and is a guy who's often looked over. But Moore's been impressive this year. 80 games played, 30 goals, 25 assists for 55 points this season. So that shows to me that the NHL's really developed a long time since, you know, the years of trap hockey and all that stuff. You see guys who aren't that big name of players. Like Trevor Moore is not that big name of a guy. He might he might be recognizable playing from Toronto, but a lot of fans really don't know who the guy is. He has 30 goals. A 30-goal scorer, and a lot of people don't know who he is. That just goes to show how talented the league is overall and just shows that a guy like Trevor Moore, a guy who would probably be, like, you know, would be looked at as, like, a third-line player on other teams, is a legitimate 30-goal scorer in the NHL. So, yeah, really impressive there from Trevor Moore. One of my favorites to enjoy in L.A. this season. I definitely have enjoyed him a lot. Uh, and finally, fifth in scoring is Quinton Byfield. Byfield with 78 games played, 19 goals, 34 assists for 53 points. Uh, Byfield obviously was a rookie who looked really impressive this year, um, or not a rookie. He was a rookie a few years ago, uh, but it was really impressive this year and has finally started to look like the player that we envisioned him to be. There were years where we were like, eh, he's not really been that great. But then again, he wasn't getting line time. He wasn't getting, uh, ice time that a lot of the other rookies in his class were getting. So it's good to see that he's doing well. I'm glad that profile of a bust has been kind of taken away from Byfield from most people, but there's obviously that certain group of people that are just going to criticize him no matter what. That just is how it is in the hockey world. Um, but yeah, those are the top five scores. Um, I do want to say overall, 
Um, the Dubois numbers have been concerning. I understand that. But when the team's playing well, it's not that noticeable. I understand that. And I understand this team, and I, I know the team would much rather have guys like Gabe Velarde, Alex Iafalo, and guys like that back on the roster. Um, I do like the center depth they're building, but Dubois has not been the player that we envisioned him to be with LA. He just honestly hasn't when you look at the numbers. Um, I know there's other guys, too, on this roster who do, co do cause some concern. Um, the defense is something that does kind of get iffy with a little bit of people, whether you think Drew Doughty's the guy or not. Um, there's guys like Mikey Anderson, too. I know Brent Clark's come up and played a little bit this year. He's looked like a solid player, too. I've made plenty of Kings videos this year, um, and some of them have done very well. Actually, the most popular video in the channel's history is the Kings video. It's funny. But regardless, um, I, I do overall I like the offense. The defense is a little bit of an eh, but I think it's still fine. The goaltending is where I have my biggest question. It is. Um, I think these goalies aren't bad by any means, but just when you look at, like, Cam Talbot has no playoff success. David Reddick doesn't have any playoff success. It just doesn't look ideal. So Talbot's 26, 19, and 6, a 2.46 goals against average and a .916 save percentage. Yeah, I mean, Talbot, like, he he's having a really good year. Not a, maybe a Vesna caliber year, but, like, not a, he's having a good year. But is that going to transition to playoffs? Are you going to see Byfield score, or, or see Byfield, see Talbot, I'm, I'm losing at it today, see Talbot doing this well in the playoffs? I don't know if I can see that coming from a fan who's not a Kings fan. I don't know if I can see that. Um, you can let me know if you're a Kings fan in the comment section down below what you think of that. But, honestly, I am not too keen or on board with that overall situation there with the Kings. But, you know, Talbot, we'll see how he does. And then David Riddick is the backup goalie. 13-6-3, a 2.15 goals against average, and a .921 save percentage. What's funny is that I actually thought for a long time that David Riddick was you know, like going to be the starter for the Kings. I actually thought that Riddick and Copley was going to be your starting tandem when Talbot and Riddick came. That's what I thought was going to happen. That was way wrong. But regardless, um, yeah, the, these guys have looked really solid in the, in the regular season as a tandem, but I don't know if these two goalies who, when you put them on other teams, have not been that great. Now, granted, Ottawa wasn't that great, and Nashville, when Riddick was there, wasn't that great either. So it makes some sense, but I don't know if I'm relying on Cam Talbot going to win me a Stanley Cup in the playoffs. So that is my biggest question for the LA Kings. Overall, I do like this team a lot. I do think this team is a legitimate playoff team. I am really going to enjoy them this year in the playoffs. If they play Edmonton again, it is what it is, but I would love to see the Kings go far in the playoffs and at least win a round. I mean, this team fired their coach midway through the year. I haven't talked about that that much, but there's a lot of pressure on the line here for this Kings team to actually get over the hump of the first round. We'll see if that happens this year's playoffs. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below on the Kings clinching a playoff spot. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe down below. I greatly appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I will do another one of these when the Islanders clinch. Uh, the wildcard teams, if you're wondering where Vegas is and Tampa's and Nashville's are, uh, I do those in one video with the wildcard teams. I do separate videos for, for the top three teams in each division. But regardless, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.